I'm going to do a processing tutorial on an LRGB image. Um, because I'm using free recording software, I only get a maximum of 10 minutes for each recording. So this is going to be in three parts. This is part one, which is processing the luminance. Part two will be processing the RGB. And part three will be combining the luminance and the RGB together and further processing. And um, what I've done before I started this, I registered the images together. Um, you can see there's a bit of rotation um, on these images. Um, I'm not sure whether this is because it's old data and I've tried to register it together or whether it's because I've used different telescopes and cameras, which I quite often do. And sometimes I don't get them exactly aligned together. So eventually we're going to have to crop those edges off. But I'm not going to do that at this stage because um, having registered it, I want all the stars to sit on top of each other. So the first thing that I, I do is I go into image adjust levels and then I bring the sliders in the black and the grey slider. That little bump there is those edges that need cutting off so we go past them and I bring that up almost to the histogram and the same with the grey slider. So if we compare in the history open you can see we've already done a nice little bit of a stretch there. The next thing that I do is image adjust curves. Now what you need to do is you need to fix your black point down and you need to fix your white point down so it's only the nebula that's really getting stretched. So to do that you need to click on a dark part of the sky and if you look at this diagonal line you'll see a little box come up on it which is about here. Now if you use the keyboard and press alt gr it'll put it on automatically and it'll stay there. So do the same with the white point. Press alt gr and click. Now you didn't see much there because it came up right on the corner here. I'll do it again. You can see a little box coming up. So I'm just going to click just above that little box. And then I'm going to click on the nebula and the box has come up there and I'm going to stretch it from there. We don't want to stretch it too much the first time. So again, looking back at open, levels, curves. And I'm going to do that again. Image adjust, curves. I'm going to fix the white point and I'm going to fix the black point. And I'm going to find an even dimmer bit of the nebula this time. And I'm going to stretch that. Okay, so back to open, levels, curves, curves. So we've stretched the nebula quite a bit, um, but if you look here, you can see that it's much darker in that corner than it is down here. So we've got a gradient going on. So we need to sort that out. Now, we don't want to stretch the, to, to gradient the nebula, and we don't want to include these dark edges in the gradient exterminator. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this polygonal lasso tool and just select the actual image. So that excludes those horrible black edges. So that's the image. And then to exclude the nebula, I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to press Alt on the keyboard. And I'm going to draw around the nebula. Don't go too close to the edge of it, but draw around everything that you think is nebulosity and give a little bit of clearance. And now everything that's in this area will be affected by Gradient Exterminator. Gradient Exterminator is a plugin 
which is um, licensed um, to Russell Croman, who wrote it. Um, when I bought it, it was a few years ago now, it was about £32. I think it's probably gone up a bit, but it really is a valuable tool. So I'm going to go into Gradient Exterminator and I'm going to use Medium Detail, Medium Aggressiveness and watch what happens to the sky background here and here. It's evened it out. It's a very useful tool to have. I'm going to deselect now. We've got rid of our gradient. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a high pass filter. Now, when I was first taught to do this, I was told to isolate all the stars by selecting them, expanding them and feathering them, and then do the gradient exterminator on the rest of the image. But generally speaking, I found that didn't work terribly well. Um, so then I got into doing what they call selective layering. Um, and so I do a combination of, of, of each of these. I use um, the selective layering technique and the high pass filter combined. So in order to do that, I need to duplicate the layer and I need to select all and copy the image to the clipboard and then deselect. So I'm going to go into filter, other, high pass filter. Now you'll get a grey image and I always think that when you can see a bit of detail um, sort of prominent in the image you're probably about right. If you go up there it's too harsh, if you go down there it's not enough. So as soon as you can start to see a little bit of detail poking through, that's usually about right. So click OK. And then you drop this down and you select Overlay. And then instead of flatten image, you merge down. Now you can see that sharpened it up quite a bit. But there's a but here because it's also sharpened up all the stars, which is why in the method I was originally taught, they told you to, um, you know, isolate the stars with a mask. But um, I only really want to sharpen up a few bits here, so I'm just going to paste back that image I put on the clipboard. And you can see immediately it softened all the stars up again from those nasty white blobs, and it's back to where they were. So what we want to do now is we want to, I'm looking at the bottom layer, we want to use all these little sharpened bits in that layer, but this nice soft nebula and the, the unsharpened stars of the top layer. So to do that, you use your rubber tool, you need to select the size brush that you need, and we're literally going to rub out some of the image on the top layer and um, make sure that you avoid the stars. So we're slowly letting some of the sharp detail from the lower layer th show through. And you can switch the top layer on and off and see what you're doing. And we're going to go around here and select some of these bits. Select up there. If you just switch switch the bottom layer off, you can see what you've rubbed out. So um, it's a question of deciding which bits you want to rub out. But as I say, just make sure that you don't rub out any of the stars. I think we might have a little bit of this here, and a little bit down here. This is sort of, as I say, it's, it's partly something I've devised and partly something I've been taught. So I think that's probably enough. Um, so you can see what you've rubbed out. And um, maybe that little bit down there. Now I'm just going to flatten it. So uh, 